Today we're going to print a capacitive sensor using inkjet printing using both silver and carbon ink. The silver ink will be for the metallic sensing part and the carbon ink is going to be for the resistor. We're going to print these one over the other using a very simple piezo desktop printer. I mentioned already that we use the graphical cartridges for our inks. We use the black cartridge only so everything we print is graphically going to be in black and this will deploy this cartridge to print the ink that is inside. This cartridge has our JSB25P inkjet silver ink and using this I am going to print the sensing and conducting part of the capacitive sensor. So this is as easy as loading any other graphical cartridge. The cartridge with our ink contingent merely gets placed inside here and we enable the cartridges to go. First we're going to do a test print and this is to ensure that we have a clear nozzle to print our ink. To do this we just use the uh, standard printing options that come with the printer software. So we're going to choose our particular uh, set of conditions. We use best photo and matte heavyweight paper uh, and we print in the grayscale only because as I already mentioned we don't deploy the uh, cyan magenta or yellow cartridges, just the black ink cartridge to print our ink. All of these settings are in place, so now we are going to do a nozzle check, again just using the printer's own software uh, that comes with it. So I'm going to print a nozzle check, and you will be able to see here we expect to see a print like this one. We don't expect to see the colours because we are not enabling the coloured cartridges, merely the black and white cartridges. We can see from this print that our nozzle head is nice and clear. We got very clear lines and very clear letters and numbers. Therefore, we're ready to print our pattern. We're going to print on two different types of substrate. We're going to print on paper. Uh, this is an Epson glossy photo sheet that's compatible with our ink. And we're also going to print on Novell. Uh, this is a PET material that's modified on the surface with a mesoporous layer that wicks away the solvent of the ink. Uh, these two substrates, uh, once printed, pretty much come out of the printer dry and already conducting, but we will do further processing on them afterwards. I'm being very careful about how I mount my paper. Uh, this is because once I print the silver and photonically cure it, I'm later going to print some carbon tracks over it, um, and I want these to register very well. So now that I have finished doing the nozzle test, I am going to go to uh, my design. This is my design. This is a very simple PDF that I generated from PowerPoint. Um, this is the great thing about inkjet printing. If this particular design doesn't work out, I can easily change it without having to buy any further hardware. So now let's print this. You just print it like you would any other print. And you can see just how fast this is at printing four sensors at once. And this is over the paper substrate. We like to try paper and plastic because for some applications, plastic is better, such that if your print is going to be exposed to elements that are unsuitable for paper. But if you want to do a cheaper print, then you also have the paper option. And there we have one of our samples. I'm also going to print over the plastic novel. Again, being careful how I mount this. And 
And again, here we have some very cheap and easily produced prints. Now, I mentioned that these are relatively conducting and dry when they come out of the printer. So we're going to test the conductivity over one of the tracks. And here we have a conductivity over this track of 16.1 ohms. That's over the paper. Now we will look at the Novell. And over the same magnitude, we have around 250 kilo ohms. Now, if you leave this to dry overnight, the conductivity will increase dramatically. But we're also going to photonically cure these prints to increase the conductivity even more. In fact, we can decrease the resistance by three orders of magnitude down to the ohm, from kilo ohms to ohms 